What's going on, guys? Uh, welcome to another episode of Modern Man. It's where we have discussions on ways we can be better as men, boys becoming men in the modern society. And today, we're going to talk about creating versus consuming. Uh, joining us today, joining the panel, Ryan Alford. What's going on, man? Thanks for having me. Uh, of course. Uh, usual suspects, Tyler Harris. Charles Russ in the building, as always. And uh, the first thing to get it started. Up. Yeah, no. Yeah, yeah. 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 I don't know about you. We oh, check the footwork out. Let them shine. Let them shine. <laughs> they want to see them right there. Yeah. That's that new. Go ahead. Let, let, Charles just got off the moon. Hey, that's <laughs> it, baby. <laughs> let us see what you're working Hey, let them shine. Let it shine, baby. Let it shine. <laughs> Real man can moonwalk. Now, hold on, but, but you got it. Tyler's got a nice, uh, nice little. Yeah. He's got the. Off-white. It's on the shoe. It's written it on the it. shoe. Yeah. I so almost you know wore the, the retro game. Air Jordans, but I ah. thought this guy might. Yeah, you, you know, you got to watch him on the fashion thing. He might. He's going to show up with the new stuff. I know. See, that's perfect because you're all stylish. And part of what you create is your style. We're talking about creating versus consuming. What does that mean to you guys? I think it's just not looking like everybody else. <laughs> yeah. And that's what a lot of people like to do. Just blend in. I think it's just standing out. Whether it's, um, you know, with your clothes or some people use personality. I think it's just having people look at you and think something maybe is different. That's nice, right? Mm -hmm. Just to differentiate yourself from the, all the noise. I've gotten to where, you know, I'm so busy. I don't, I can't consume. I, it's just more, I only have time to create. I mean, I do, I create for a living, you know, for clients. And then for myself, you know, it's just, it kind of comes natural because I have, friends or people ask, you know, where's your style? What's your, you know, where does your vision come from? And I mean, I think you, you either, you're kind of born with it a little bit, but then you take from around you, you know, your peers and different things. But, you know, a lot of mine's just, you know, what feels right. You know? for, for those that don't know who you are and what you do, yeah. uh, give them a quick like elevator picture of your background. Yeah, I, I was born and raised in Greenville, uh, actually, but I've been in the ad agency business in the professional career. I was a Clemson grad been a, in the ad agency business for, I don't want to age myself here at the modern man, but uh, 18 years uh, in the ad agency business. I've worked in Manhattan, I've worked in Chicago, um, and on some of the largest brands in the world. Uh, now I own uh, an agency. It's for primarily content, social media. Um, we kind of help, we help people tell their stories mm -hmm. and it's called Radical. So ad agency business and you know, building content and building stories every day. So mm -hmm. what we do is create, um, you know, we like to tell, I, I tell people like, you know, we help people push people out of their comfort zones. You know, a lot of what we do is, is create for others, but we help them kind of tell their story a lot. Everybody's got a story, mm -hmm. but not everyone knows how to kind of tell it naturally, you know, on their own. And so it's amazing when you can, free people up and yeah. make them comfortable to tell their story. I like that concept you talk about telling your story because I think a lot of people have the, the lives that they live where they wake up, they go to work, come home, eat dinner. It's one thing to tell that story, but what about creating your story? How can, you, how can someone create a better story? Man, it's, it's step one, man. Like it, it, all, it all starts with, I'm sure we've all been through those things, is determining your goal. What's your goal? And most people have lofty goals, honestly. When you really dig, dig into them and you figure out what their goal is, what's your goal? And it doesn't, your goal doesn't have to be my goal. Your, your goal for you is never wrong because it's yours and you should own that. Um, most people love the, the memory aspect, you know. Tyler's a big legacy guy and, you know, I, I am too. That's my, my thought process is how are you remembered? And with the create, creativity portion, if you want to be remembered, be original. You know why Kobe Bryant will never be the best basketball player ever? Because he was a Michael Jordan copy. And that's my opinion. I've watched his game. Even if you watch the move, you've seen everybody's probably seen a little video where they're playing right next to each other and they're doing the same things. <laughs> right. Well, you can't be the best because this guy is who you copied. So, you know, and that's, that's always been my thought process is, yeah, I take bits and pieces from the best. You know, if you're, if you're great at this, I will listen to you about that. If you're great at this, I will listen to you about that. But at the end of the day, I'm my own, I'm my own finished product. <clears throat> I make my own recipe. I, I take things from different places to make, to make myself what I want, to make that creation. You know, like even from the way I dress, the way I train, 
in the gym, to the way I conduct my financial business, to the way I market, to the way I think. I try to take little pieces from everybody and create something versus, versus the blueprint style. Because if you just follow a blueprint, everybody's like, oh, you're just, you're a clone. You're Somebody a copy. else. Mm -hmm. I want to be me. I want to be the me that with the, the help from above and whatever my mind can concoct and pull together from, from other great people, that's, that's who I want to be. There's a, there's a Joe Rogan video called Be the Superhero or, or something of your own story. And one of my coaches, Sean Whalen, listens or watches that video every single morning. Mm -hmm. and, and I love that aspect of being the superhero of your story, but it starts with having your own story. And I think that's like the biggest encouragement to anyone is it's, it's your story and, and you can create it today. Uh, that's, that's been the fascinating thing that I've seen in, in my life and, and in so many others is that just because the narrative of that story has been one way for 5, 10, 20, 30 years doesn't mean that that story can't change tomorrow. Um, but you have to be the superhero of that mm -hmm. story for it to change. Um, and literally, this guy watches that video every single morning. He's yeah. like, that's just the mentality. I, every single thing I do, every, every place that I go, every person I talk to, I think to myself, what would a superhero version of me do in this scenario? Mm -hmm. And it changes the story completely when you, when you start putting that context around everything. Change is an interesting word uh, because I think, you know, when I think through my lifetime and I, there's been so many different avenues that I feel like I've been down and mindsets that I've been in in life. I feel like if you can't adapt change, I mean, that's change goes in modern or almost like parallel to me. Mm -hmm. It's like sure. to me, I think because the people that I know that I don't feel like have embraced being modern or, um, you know, being open to new perspectives is because they're afraid to change. And I've never been afraid to change. And I think it's like if there's one attribute, like, it's like I'm open to change. Mm -hmm. you know? and, and I think, you know, that open-mindedness and ability and willingness, it doesn't mean you're not scared as hell, you know, mm -hmm. but you've got to be open to change in your mindset and your ways mm -hmm. and, you know, I'm going to walk down this side of the road today, you mm -hmm. know, or I'm going to go move to New York and my family and friends think you're crazy, mm -hmm. you know, like you just yeah. got to do it, you know, and I think not enough people feel freed up, you know, like I, I think they're, they're chaining themselves, but I think it's that, 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 that ability to change. I mean, you mentioned a lot about that change and it reminds me of the book, I'm sure, you probably all read it, small book called Who Moved My Cheese. I was just about to say that. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, but speaking about books and everything, to create, we have to create from some form of inspiration. So the, the ironic thing about it is in order to create at some point in time, we have to consume. What are some things you, you consume or have consumed that allows you to create? What do you think, Charles? Uh, <laughs> hot potato, hot potato. Yeah, yeah. He was this way every time. Yeah. Like, I think I answered first last time. <laughs> well, a hey, I'm a, I am a hundred percent. I'm a big mentor guy, big coach guy. Some of that comes from the learning aspect of sports, for instance. Like I tell my kids all the time, you can listen to a coach for this guy can be eighty years old and he can talk to you about they play basketball and football. This guy can talk to you about basketball for ten hours, and he's going to tell you one thing that's going to save you two years of work. And it's literally one thing, you know, are you setting your bar when you do your crossover? And all of a sudden you see, I see my kids' eyes go, hmm. I'm not. And if you just keep doing that, dealing with that, doing it on your own. So I like to consume experience, I guess is, is my, would be my example. I want to consume experience. You know, it's, we, we do this thing based on what we know. We do this thing one time, average is 84 years for a man. I want to fast forward everything as much as possible. I want to. I don't want to spend years trying to figure out these little idiosyncrasies, and that that comes with putting your ego under the table and talking to someone else. And it doesn't always have to be someone older than you. There are people younger than me that are doing great things in certain areas, and I see it, and I I, I salute those guys, and I, I want to talk to you. I want to talk to you about. I want to learn what you know. I want you to give me that shortcut. You know, um, if we try to take take our time and learn everything on our own, purely from uh, trial and error, you have a rough one. So that would be my thing, consume, consume expertise and consume knowledge from others. Mm -hmm. To me, 
inspiration is a, it's a difficult one because people use inspiration and motivation interchangeably and it's not the case. Yeah. Um, inspiration comes from in spirit, which means from within. And so how can I go to someone else to get something from within? You can't. But even, even as I'm saying that, I've, I've thought of a million different times where I've said, like, I need some inspiration or I've told someone that I'm going to inspire or, like, you know, that, that my goal has been to inspire someone or, or to be an inspiration. Like, well, how does that work? Um, motivation is, is usually what you're going to external sources for. But inspiration, to me, that comes from purpose comes from passion that comes from having the goals like, like Charles was, was saying it comes from knowing your why like that's what keeps people in my opinion inspired like when I think of waking up inspired I don't I don't think of where did I go this morning what did I listen to what did I watch who did I talk to so that I could be inspired to me again coming from within that that's I'm either inspired or I'm not so I think those things like having having a purpose, knowing what that purpose is, we've all, all got one, but knowing what that purpose is, knowing what your why is, having big goals, those are the things that when I wake up and I feel inspired, like those are what I'm, I'm focusing on. I think too many people you, kind of use those interchangeably. Mm -hmm. You hear that a lot. Um, that's kind of a difficult topic. What is your why? And it changes it used to change more often than it's changing right now. Right now I'm pretty locked tight on my why as far as what I want to do. And that's, and that's a f key laser focus on helping other people become successful. Um, but I think that's because I've gotten to a certain level of comfort in where I am with my business now. Cause before selfishly, I, I had to get myself in that place before I could worry about anybody else being successful. Mm -hmm. I had to take care of myself through personal responsibility, but now my, my focus is on how many other people that I can create a scenario and an environment and a platform for them to experience the same thing that I've experienced over the past few years. And just knowing in the back of my mind that by doing that, I will be successful. But having a genuine focus on that individual person, those individual people, and creating that change in their lives. Like that, that to me is what got me up at 4.30 this morning on a Sunday go to my office um, was to work on that. So some of the things we can consume, books, classes, courses, and you mentioned wanting to help other people. When you walk into a room based on style, based on just how someone carries themselves, you can almost tell if somebody is a consumer or creator. In my head, I think of the Homer Simpson example. What does Homer Simpson look like? He's, he's big, he's fat, eats donuts, sits on the couch, watches TV all, all day. Um, that's just one example of who you would think a consumer would look like. What do you think a creator looks like? I mean, I'll answer that, I, you know, maybe indirectly. But you say the creator or a creator? <laughs> yeah. A creator. Yeah. Got it. yeah. If you see him, let me know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying uh, to go over there. <laughs> Where's he at? <laughs> You know, I'm going to lump like the first and the second, one of the topics you had there, and I'm come full circle with that. And I think for me, I was at this point where I was consuming, reading books, um, anything I could get my hands on, you know, probably five years ago. And then what I realized then is kind of this truth of like who you surround yourself with. Mm -hmm. What I consume now is like the five to 10 people that I surround myself with, the Tylers of the world, uh, Patrick Garner, who's one, a good friend and uh, business associate and can, don't wanna name drop every person, but now I'm consuming from them like directly, like what I'm seeing, what they do. I see the success that they're having. Um, and you can reverse engineer that for yourself and build your own version of success. But when you surround yourself with positive, influential people that are being successful, I mean, just look out. It will all come together. Because, I, I mean, I, you know, some of it's cliche, but I watch, um, you know, some of my friends even, you know, I know some of the people they're still engaging with. And, like, and there's no doubt in my mind it's the difference between... Uh, success and great content and great energy and not. Mm -hmm. And I think, you know, when it, 
to come full circle, when I walk into a room, whether it's a networking event or a business, it's amazing how now I will end up gravitating towards the like-minded and the, and the, the, the ones that we can share ideas with and that, that really can speak to me in a way that, you know, I don't know, it's, it's like almost, you know, you talk about these things and you think, uh, oh, uh, that's cliche or whatever. Like, you got to make stuff happen. Like, but when you start seeing and knowing what that mindset looks like, you'll find yourself engaged with those people. Mm-hmm. And, and I think that um, it's, it's been rewarding for me doing less, uh, like, consuming in the format of reading and more in the in the in the kind of the engagement of conversation and what advice would you give to anyone watching right now that is on the ground level that doesn't have access to the Tyler Harris's of the world yourself Charles Russ's how can they increase the level of their circle well you know it's it's funny um you know Matthew's here who shoots content for me and you know Matthew's a freshman at Wofford uh, he's, what are you, 19, Matthew? 18. 18. Uh, and Matthew reached out via email at an agency that I was working with at um, six or eight months ago and uh, before I started Radical. And he sent an email, and I just appreciated, like, his kind of go-getted nature. He was like, I've, you know, been starting to shoot some videos. I'm kind of interested. And I'm like, he took the, you know, he sent it to the, the chief marketing officer of, a, of an ad agency. <laughs> And he took the whatever, and so I met with them, and uh, you know, because I will, I will engage with people. I had another another guy that's like 22 that reached out to me on Facebook. He's like, oh, I didn't expect you to reply. I've been following you and Tyler, and like doing this stuff. I mean, I will. I, if someone makes the effort, I mean, it may not be tomorrow, but you got to put yourself out there. Don't be afraid to ask. And if you send one email, it doesn't work. Send ten more. Yeah. And you know, Matthew's been in meetings like with multimillionaires the last six months, people we've been meeting with, business ventures that I've been talking about. I mean, you know, he's been having access as 18 because he put himself out there. And, you know, that's a real world example. And I think, you know, you don't be afraid to reach out. And if, and I think, I think people like, it's like paralysis by analysis. I think people think that that people might not be accessible, but I think you'd be surprised if, you, if you're willing to kind of put the effort in. Nice. So kind of spreading it out to everyone, still talking about, you know, what does a creator look like? Someone who's creating content or creating their style, the world around them. How can you kind of pick them out of a crowd? I don't think it's possible. I mean, look around. If you, yeah. I wish we had a ca- another camera that would scroll to all these guys we have sitting here. Mm-hmm. If you were to walk into a room, walk into a meeting, walk into a bar, walk into a club, I'm not gonna pick these guys out because the thing about being artistic um, and the idea of creation, and talking to TJ a lot, our, our boy TJ Reeves, you know, <laughs> and talking to him a lot though, he's very creative. He is, he's very creative. Yeah. But there's so many realms of being creative. Mm-hmm. Fashion, is creative. If you were a true fashion guy, if you were a true stylistic person, you're creative because you create your own look. That's just one example. These guys that do content, the different styles, the different cuts, the different ways, that's all creative. So I, I don't think there's a look, you know, not to be the, the antagonist in the story, but there's not a look for a creator. There's not a look for someone who is creative because I may see, one who, who, see someone who appears very bland, but, uh, we have that conversation and all of a sudden they're like, well, I'm, 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 an, I'm an artist. I paint this, I do that. I'm not, I'll use my girlfriend. She is a very creative person. She looks creative though. Like she looks creative. She does, mm-hmm. she, her hair is purple. She does outlandish. So you would see her in our, in our modern day definition of creative. You would see her and be like, I bet she's creative and she does. All the artwork in my gym, she painted it. Like she is creative. She's artistic, which is what a definition of creative. But with all the new avenues to be creative, um, you know, even the idea of building, building a business is creative in its own right. Mm-hmm. I'm going to pluck an idea out of thin air. It's a value proposition for society, but I'm going to create it on my own. That's creative. So there's not a look 
for a creator. And that's why openness is important. That's why exactly what he said, accessibility and openness is important. You never know who you're talking to. You may literally be talking to the next Elon Musk and he's 17, but you're talking to him and you just, well, I'll have that conversation and we'll see. So the conversation though, the converse, so it's not a look, maybe it's a sound. Because the conversation will tell you. When you have that first conversation, you'll get motivation. You'll, you'll start to see things that, they'll start to talk about things that you've never thought about. Like, I, I'll, I'll say it right now. Between talking to Tyler, uh, Ted, you doing your podcast, coming to Greenville Hustle, Andre reached out to me just like, you know, he reached out to you. He just reached out to me on social media. So between all of you guys, now I'm like, next year, I, I got, social media's got to change for me. I want, I want to get, I need to get into that world. There's things that I want to create. There's literally a, an image, a picture that I want to create for the world and show them things that, that I'm doing and that you can do the same thing. It's, it's not hard for no other reason than, than just create it. So I would challenge the look aspect and say it, maybe it's a, it's a sound or an energy, something like that. You couldn't have said this better. I'm so glad you just said energy um, mm -hmm. because that's exactly where I wanted to mention first in saying that you, I agree where, whether it's creative or creators, all colors, shapes, sizes. But I've been struggling with an issue lately, which is energy and enthusiasm. I've been reading so much and listening to so much about energy, enthusiasm, energy, enthusiasm, energy, enthusiasm. Coming from a person that's int more introverted and doesn't have an, uh, a very natural like energy and enthusiasm about me in comparison to those that you easily recognize like that person's got a lot of energy and enthusiasm. I'm not that person. But a lot of the stuff that I've been reading and, and listening to lately is like it doesn't matter. Like, even if you're not that person, force and energy and enthusiasm will attract the people you want to attract, will attract the opportunities you want to attract. And so I look at a guy like Dan Waldschmidt, a friend of, of Ryan and mine. Like every time I sit down with him, and the last time I just asked him, I was like, have you always had this energy and enthusiasm? <laughs> because it's just, it's, it's level 1,000. Yeah. But in a good way. There's, there's level 1,000 in a bad way, and that's when you go to the room, the loudest person in the room. That's not who I'm talking about. Because that's usually the one that, that <laughs> really got the least put together. <laughs> but, <laughs> but the true energy and enthusiasm based on confidence and knowing their role and their why and their purpose, like that person that's like waking up with their hair on fire because they know exactly what they got to do every day. I look at that and I struggle with like, do I, is, how do I force it and it not be fake? Like, how do I like all of a sudden get this like level of enthusiasm that's going to be a stretch for me, but it's g coming from a genuine place, you know? Um, I can't increase my caffeine intake anymore. <laughs> um, <laughs> so that's wait. not the answer. <laughs> and so, and, I, and I'm not going to do drugs. So... So that's what I'm trying to figure out. Uh, but I think when you go into that room, that, that genuine energy and enthusiasm is what I'm looking for. Well, I have a question then. For whatever reason, you've been attracted to everybody who's sitting here, in some reason. What attracted you? It, to everybody, it may be different for everybody. I would just ask you, what attracted you to each person in here? I, th I think it was certainly the like-mindedness mm -hmm. and the genuineness. And the drive like i could i could instantly that instant difference in drive of knowing that that these people are trying to level up constantly are trying they, they're trying to go somewhere extraordinary i think that's what i could see but but the but i think that that's the like-mindedness but yeah. that's energy to yeah. me it is exactly and that's energy you're right and you have an energy you have energy. Like, in, sure. when we had lunch the other day, I'm like, dude, this dude's got, he's got energy. That's new energy. Yeah, and that's Because awesome. I've just now really gotten into my purpose and passion. But I think it's the enthusiasm side, the like, I don't know. And, 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 and I'm glad I said I struggle with it, because as we're talking, I'm struggling. Yeah, like as you, far as like where... Like where for, for me, and I, I don't know what you guys say, I, I don't struggle with your enthusiasm. I, I, I see it. I see it on social media, yeah. Yeah. and I see it when I talk to you. Mm -hmm. Like, yeah. there's different ways of expressing anything. 
Sure. And your enthusiasm comes out literally in what you're doing. Like the so fact like the intensity that you can be enthusiasm. It. Yeah. It doesn't have to be like volume and exactly speed of talking. Like Dan mm -hmm. is like volume and like I've never met someone that talks faster. Like right. you realize it's because this guy is doing so much that yeah. he has like it's like almost as as though and he's he like, has he's tried like to like condense. borderline genius. So he's like oh, ten yeah. steps down the road. Like when yeah. you're like we may all be two or three, but he's like ten down the road and, and Gary, talking Gary about v, every one he's, of them. He's very Gary V S. Like yeah. it's very much like Gary. Like he's you say one sentence and he's four paragraphs down yeah. and he doesn't need to hear anymore. No. Because he understands it. And he's ready to respond, you know? Yeah. Um and I guess, and that's a good point. I think that, I guess, the different forms of enthusiasm. Yeah, dude, you don't have to bounce energy. off the wall. You, Ted, Ted is the most energetic cat I've ever met. <laughs> like, when he's out. Yeah. And it's positive. It's massively positive. It's very inclusive to everyone in the room. That's his energy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I would put my energy, as far as expression, my energy is, I'm, I'm pretty expressive out there, but it's not Ted energy. Mm -hmm. But that doesn't make it, it does, it's different. Yeah. It's different. So it's, what are some other adjectives we could use for enthusiasm? Because I think charisma would be, would be what you're, a lot of what you're talking about with Ted's. Yeah, like sure. that, the, the ability to MC a, an event is like the most difficult thing I would, can imagine. Like I talked to Jay do a lot about this as well. And <laughs> like the ability to hold an audience like that, like this pure charisma enthusiasm. Mm -hmm. So what, what would be some other things that you would look at and be like, that guy's enthusiastic, but he's not over the top like i just got someone could be charming <laughs> maybe charming that's a good one charming. i think if you're confident yeah. in whatever you do it comes off as energy mm -hmm. you know like yeah. not and there's a cocky and confident fine line but uh i think you know tyler's confident in what he does and so it's that's an energy and that's a that that comes off as enthusiastic to me okay. in that way mm -hmm. and i think that's a, that's you know, that's it you know, yeah, it's yeah. a confidence. Like I never doubt anything Tyler's saying. Like I, you know, like even I know he's full of it. Like, you know, like, like I'm kind of. I believe. I, I, think, I, believe, I, think I believe he believe. believes that. <laughs> he believes that 100. I believe that. Yes, I don't like, necessarily believe I'm what a, he says, but I'm I believe like, that he believes what he yeah. says. Oh, yeah. I'm up here in the yeah. Antarctic, and I am buying that ice. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, dude, he's saying. I feel like I need it. Yeah. <laughs> but dude you do it though you do it i'll give you your credit you do it like when you we were having lunch and you was telling me you were talking about the new product which you're launching um yeah I, he, he gave me like a 48 hour head of, i got a 48 hour head of time sneak peek you know he, he, he just, we're just talking at lunch True. but the literal confidence confidence and you find your confidence the way you find it. you find your confidence through preparation yeah mm -hmm. you ready yeah dude that gets Maybe not for the average guy, not for everybody. That gets me hyper. Like when you're telling me, I'm like, you know what that makes me do is like, Charles, you need to prepare your for your next yeah. <laughs> undertaking. Mm -hmm. You need to be ready when you step on the floor, like Tyler's ready. And the fact that you're you're sharing that, dude, that's that's enthusiasm. That that gives you're putting out positive energy into the universe, and and that that's your way. That that's your way. Yeah. And your way doesn't have to be Ted's way. Your way doesn't mm -hmm. have to be. Because it doesn't, it doesn't have to work like that. You know, it's the same thing. Like, what does a consumer look like? What does a creator look like? They don't look a certain way. Because the richest guy on the hill may have just gotten a good, may have been lucky one time, and now you have money. And we all know when you have it, you can make it. You know? So bringing that all together, because I think the conversation had a really good flow to it in terms of not necessarily knowing what a creator looks like, but more or less feeling that energy. You get that energy, and the amazing thing about that enthusiasm, that energy, it travels through different mediums. You don't have to be in person to feel it or see it. It can happen through social media, much of like how we kind of linked up. And really, the, the inception of Modern Man came from a DM message to you. A lot of people asked, how did you and Tyler link up? I was scrolling <laughs> through Instagram. I saw a picture from Tyler, and I saw it was Greenville. And I was like, oh, snap, I'm in Greenville. And I reached out, Tyler responded. We had a, a sit down we were going to, I thought we were going to talk for 30 minutes. We ended up talking for like three, four yeah, hours. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then um, I mentioned Modern Man and he said, yeah, let's do it. So kind of feeling that energy, realizing where other people are, putting yourself out there is the start of kind of almost consuming what you want to create. Now, when you're ready to create, what is it? 
men should create. What do we create? Well, you know, I mean, I'm a father of four boys. So, you know, uh, I think I are you you never... Done, are you done creating? Yeah, I'm done. I'm done creating. So I've, I've done some creation. Uh, we're, we're done creating. Uh, but now it's like crafting, you know, men, you know, and it's even, you know, a, a business that I'm starting with a couple partners is about actually teaching 10 to 15 year old boys to how to get a head start and personal all these personal development things you see like all those courses you get hit with on instagram we're going to do that for 10 to 15 year old boys and so we're going to get them ahead on personal development and finance so like creation for me is in a lot of different things it's creating uh you know a life for my family it's creating businesses it's creating content for my clients um it's you know, when you, when you're clear on the why and the purpose, everything you're creating is backed by that rationale. And so, um, for me, you know, freedom is a big one for me, like in my purpose, you know, and it, uh, it's freedom to me is, is always having this energy towards these things will allow me to have the freedom to create what I want, when I want. And I think, you know, creation takes many forms now. And um, I think content is an interesting word now, but content is really taking a lot of different forms. And I think content, culture, and, uh, you know, we were having some side discussions on, you know, different fashions and different things that have come to Greenville and all that. And I think that, uh, everyone's idea of content is, can be different, but, um, for me, creation revolves around, you know, everything I do. I'm not sure if you, did you use the word lifestyle? Kind Maybe. Of with the freedom, with yeah. freedom, because yeah. to me it's, it's creating the life, it's creating a lifestyle. And, and for me, that lifestyle is just about doing what you want to do when you want to do it and on your terms and that that for some people like that and that for even within myself that means sometimes 16 hour days of work and then i know there'll be different periods in my life where that will mean no work or minimal work but that being on my terms you mm -hmm. know like creating a life lifestyle that i'm in charge of that, that someone is not telling me or I'm not being forced to do something because of all these outside circumstances that I can do what I'm passionate about doing and more importantly, I cannot do what I'm not passionate about doing. It's probably way more important. Um, yeah. Is getting to that point where like, you don't have to do those things that you hate to do. That, that 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 bring negativity in your life that you can that you can eliminate those from your life and that you can focus all your time on on positive stuff that you want to be working on that you're passionate about like to me that's the ultimate ultimate thing I'm trying to create um, if and I have that's one, fulfillment yeah and one word of advice is for people like there is no reason to settle for something you're not happy with anymore. There are so many avenues and so way, many ways. Like, yeah, I mean, when I was in New York, did I make more money? Yeah, a little bit, but I didn't have near the, the personal, like, I don't know, freedom, fulfillment, that's the word, uh, that I have now, you know? And uh, no one should be on anyone else's terms. Yeah. But, but 95% of people, like the, the toughest question you could ever ask yourself and ever have to answer is what do you want? Yeah. What do you want? And I'll, and I'll take you through a quick, Most people quick know scenario. The, know yeah. the answer to well, and they'll, and they'll use phrases that, that aren't real life. So they'll say, I want to be financially free. Got it. What does that look like? What does that mean for you? Um, that means that I'm no longer controlled by debt. Cool. We're getting, we're getting closer. So what does no longer being controlled by debt look like? What does that allow you to do? 
Well, if I don't have any, if I don't have the debt anymore, then that means that I can, you know, be more free with my time. Awesome. That's another good thing. So what are you doing with that time that you're now free with? And then you, when you finally go down this rabbit hole of why, but why? So what does that mean? So what does that mean? So what does that look like? And then all of a sudden you get to that lifestyle. You're like, mm-hmm. I want to be able to pick up my kids from school every day while making a decent living and taking six weeks of vacations every year and visiting my parents that live in North Carolina every other weekend. Like when you get specific to like what you actually want, like by the detail, it's like, oh, it's because you said financially free and I have no idea what that means. Yeah. <laughs> but you really, that's the life you want. It's almost like the, the pre-programmed answers we've given ourselves. Yeah. And only when we kind of challenge ourselves to ask, but why, but why, mm-hmm. six, seven times is when we run out of those prescribed answers and then we actually have to tap in deeper and think to ourselves, oh, yeah, well, so why do I really want that? Yeah. And most people don't get to that level. They don't peel the onion back that That's much. That's a tough thing to do by yourself. Like, I didn't, I didn't realize that until I went through that process with a coach. And it was 11 hours into the day <laughs> of him asking me why. Yeah. And finally, on the 11th hour, he was like, got it. 11 hours, cool. Now we can actually start trying to figure yeah. stuff <laughs> But once uh, you get there, then you are truly creating and not consuming. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. You know, I mean, not that you can't, but that, that's our process without knowing, you know, that's a, that's a, that was the most massive open ended question in all the modern man. I think you've ever asked, what should a man create? <laughs> yeah. Because his men were all different. Even up here, I think we're all kind of like minded, but we're extremely different. Mm-hmm. So the overarching answer is whatever you feel like is needed in this world, that's what you should create. Mm-hmm. So, that could be as high as creating opportunities for people, for other people. Mm. That could be my family life needs to be improved and, and digging down into that. But whatever you feel like is needed in this world, and your, and your world may not be my world. Your world may be, it's me and my wife and my two kids at the house. This is my world. This is what I have. This is what I need. You know, because they're not, it's not sound right now. Mm-hmm. Create that sound environment. Or it may be you're doing great at home. You're doing so great that you have time, that you, you have assets, and, but you see all these people out here. It's almost the thought of being charitable, that you see all these people out here that need opportunities. They want to work. Like, this guy wants to work, but he doesn't have an opportunity. So I'm going to create these opportunities. That's being creative, and that's what you should create. Because at the end of the day, if you see it, if you see something in the world as a need, and you start to fill that gap, that that will give you fulfillment Mm -hmm. because if you didn't see it as a need to begin with it would never be on your radar it's not a need be it a value need be it a humanitarian need it's a need yeah so when you create things that fill needs you'll start to fulfill yourself because what you identify as a need i may never identify as a need Uh, it doesn't matter to me but if it's a need for you and you create something that fulfills it you'll start to fulfill yourself and that's what that intrinsic happiness that will allow you to give that happiness to other people. That's, that, that's what it'll come from. That's a, so important. Because uh, if you aren't happy, you can't make others happy. I mean, I, it, it's, it is so true. And it's like, I've been divorced and I was miserable, you know, but I was miserable. So my first marriage was miserable. And, you know, now I'm mar- remarried. And my wife Nicole, and we're not perfect. We have our ups and downs, but I'm in a just a so different place. And what do you? Lo and behold, marriage is our marriage is in a different place. You know, you know, it's not coincidental. You know, and so I think that at peace and it being happy inside and being content. Look, we're all we're not all. You know, it's not about being perfect or like being all happy all the time. But when you're content and 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 driven with a purpose and you you know what that is i think it allows you to create and give and to be and to do those things so i think that's a key key but thing the interesting thing with that is you have to create like you make yourself happy so yeah so when i'm when i go through accountability uh with our team in all these areas of life this there was one person i was talking to i want to get too detailed and call them out but they they're just their marriage they're struggling and they've been struggling for a long time. And uh, she's always angry at her, at her husband. 
always upset and he's not changing and won't change and all this. It's, it's what, the way it's always been. And finally, I just said, I was like, it's not his job to make you happy. Like, mm-hmm. it is not his job to yeah. make you happy. Mm-hmm. And guess what? Why would he be happy? Every time you talk to him, you're yelling at him and you're angry because it's bad. I was like, why don't you just work on you? You get happy. And I promise you, if you enter every dialogue, enter the house, and you are happy because you're doing all this stuff for you, he will take notice and things will fall into place. But that's not his job. It was just this like light bulb, like, oh, you're right. Oh, my God. Well, that's it. Like, create what you think the world needs. The mm-hmm. first thing the world needs before we do any of this other stuff, before we help anybody, before we take care of our family. So that's why you give the overarching view because there's people in different places. There's, yeah. there's people who are happy. There's people who are happy and are taking care of their families. There are people who are happy taking care of their families and 50 other families. First thing the world needs is a happy, healthy, efficient, content with, I'm content here, I do want to grow, but I'm content you. Yeah. So if you're talking about creation, that's the first thing you should create, and that is a creation. That's mm-hmm. not, because you. I'm sure we all know 50 guys that they could create such a great person with what they have, but they're not doing it. They're mm-hmm. sulking, they're sad, they're miserable. <coughs> So that's the first one, man. Create create the best you you can create. And then I think everything else will just kind of fall in line. The last thing I was going to say about that, that idea of figuring out what you want, I did a podcast with a guy that said the most profound thing that I probably heard all year. And it took me back. Like I was like, hey, I need a second. Pause this guy. Oh, man. I'm like, that's, that's so good. And I was like, all right, let's, let's, I was like, let's unpack that. But he, uh, he played a little bit in the NFL. And that was his goal all, all his life. He wanted to play in the NFL, wanted to play in the NFL. Then once he got in the NFL, started partying and slacking off in practice and got cut from one team, got cut from another. But the statement that he made is that when he got to the NFL, he realized that he got what he always wanted, but he didn't want what he got. Mm-hmm. And I was like, oh, like even as I said it now, like, it's, I'm, like, mm-hmm. I'm like, you got what you wanted, but you realized you didn't want what you got. And that's, that, and, that's the, and that's the importance of figuring out what you want from the very beginning that you don't get there and realize that, oh, crap, now I've got 20 years invested into getting me here mm-hmm. and that whole success without fulfillment is ultimate failure. Like, and now i got to start over. Like, he, he had to s- completely start over his life. Yeah. And he had put everything into getting somewhere that he ultimately, he loved being a football player, but he hated playing football. People mistake goals for purpose. Yeah. There's a difference yeah, yeah. between goals and purpose. <laughs> I think that's going to be a good good spot to stop the conversation cuz I mean, we could jump down that rabbit hole <laughs> and I'll, I'll, I'll open it up right. Yeah, I'll open it up right now. We're going to have to have an episode on yeah. on uh creating happiness, finding your happiness, finding your goal and what it is you want. I'd love to invite you back out to talk about that more. But uh, for anybody out there wondering what to create, how to start creating, first and foremost, ask yourself why over and over and over again until you get rid of those prescribed answers and you find out what it is you want. Love that point, Tyler. Also, we have this thing called a cell phone. We have so many mediums, whether it's through books, audio, content on social media, you can create right now. So don't wait to create. Put yourself out there. Love that point as well. And of course, what the world needs more than anything, love Charles's point, a happy and content you. Go out there and be a modern man, guys.